too nice. <laughs> they don't fit with your Costco card, maybe. Yeah. Well, so you have a discomfort with that, therefore that's something you have to explore. When when I like met Jen, she like she's always smiling and keeping to herself. So and she's quiet, like when we did that assignment where she had to ask Aniela and you were like speak up mm -hmm. like so she seems to me like she just doesn't like conflict. So she rather stay quiet and do as you say, like please the other person just because it could be, to... but remember, conflict could occur here. Right. And there is a lot of conflict going on yeah. in here with her. Yeah. So we can't go by what we see. It's one of the reasons why I love seeing people over the phone. I love sessions. And now I've decided, you know, especially with my hair, my new hat, like, I don't want people in the house. So I'm moving slowly to a phone. Um, it's very interesting because all of that stuff is out of the way. Yeah. It's all out of the way. It's, it, 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 it's eradicated and you can go straight to hearing. This is a listening business. And if you listen, there's conflict going on internally. So a lot of people don't like conflict. Doesn't mean in here they're not beating themselves up 24 seven. But if there is someone describing you a certain way, they're also describing you the opposite way. Okay? But this is duality. And this is super, super important. Because we are all dual. We are all broken, fragmented people. We all have a bunch of eyes. Remember Gurdjieff. We are not one unified being. Bullshit. That's a bunch of bullshit. And that's what the yogis are trying to do through their eight limbs of yoga. They are trying. We are not there. So, pregnancy. Whatever happens in your pregnancy is the form of love that you learn is what you deserve, per se. So there might be other aspects to her story, but we'll just pick on here. The mother loved the aunt, put the aunt first. So if you love someone truly, you put them first. Learned behavior. So what conflict, just take a guess, could happen if Jen is involved in a relationship with a romantic partner, what is she expecting from the partner? To put her first. To put her first. <laughs> and then one day, he or she doesn't. And what happens? Hell breaks loose. Oh, hell breaks loose. <laughs> and that asshole, and that bitch, and that motherfucker. And why? Because mom showed me, made me feel, this is in our chakras, this is in our energy body, people. This is not logic. This is emotion. This is emotion, trapped. And it is said, if you love me, you will put me first. And you did it, motherfucker. Therefore, you don't love me. Right, Pedro? Mm. Fucking <laughs> bitch. <laughs> and then... There's a fight. There's a breakup. We don't know what happened at the end of the story. But we know that if someone really loves Jennifer, they put her first. And this is something I want you to learn, and I want you to highlight, and I want you to fucking tattoo on your ass. <laughs> I won't, I won't isn't, that called, isn't that called greed at the same time, though? Is that called greed? Yeah. Why is that greed? Well, because since she wants to be put first, then she's only thinking about herself. 
But two no, that's no. not greed. This is learned. And this is what I'm going to tell you. And this is what I want you to listen and tattoo and not forget this. I am not a mind reader. I have just learned how people speak beyond what they say. If someone says to me, he should have put me first. <laughs> or, my mother put my auntie first. What is really happening is the little inner child that lives here is not putting herself first. And you're going to see it in the model when we get to the steps. What you're asking the other person to give you is what your inner child, your third chakra, the little you, the little baby girl that's in that crib that never got her needs met because she didn't want milk. She wanted arms or she wanted a diaper or she wanted her blanket. They gave her milk because that's what they fucking wanted to give her so they can go back to sleep. <laughs> that bitch she didn't want milk. They're like, shh, shh. <laughs> okay. So when someone says, what they want, it's what they are not giving themselves. Super, super important. And you will see that in steps three and four when we get to the model. I'm giving you just the tenets, the theory, we haven't even gotten to the practice. But this is super, super important. People are speaking from their third chakra, their inner child, themselves. Name it what you want. I don't care. It's what they're not giving themselves. When you say, oh, but he doesn't give me time. You're not giving yourself time. So in pregnancy, we get values, we learn behavior, and we get our emotional version of love that will fuck us up for the rest of our life because that's what we're going to be seeking and seeking and seeking and seeking. And it's distorted because it's human, maternal, second chakra, Love. Does anyone remember what kind of love that was from the second chakra versus the fourth? That one's like a family. Wait, no, that one. No. It's this the, is the, the, the third it's a, word, right? it's with a, but I forgot. No, A is here. Oh, the other one. It's the, this is the nurturing love. Passionate? Right? No. Okay, so pandemic that, that is, yes. or egoic love ooh, ooh. <laughs> and agape love. Okay, um, is the, the fourth chakra. Okay, if the baby is coming out of the second chakra, guess which kind of love the baby's getting? Ooh, ooh. Pandemic erotic love. Emotions that are human, not divine. Who is the only person in the world that can give you agape love? Yourself. Yourself. Unconditional love comes from the fourth chakra, comes from the heart, and cannot be given by another human being. Perhaps once you give it to yourself and you become holy, the other person gives it because you don't really need it, so it doesn't matter. That's this holier-than-thou bullshit. You to yourself. It's kind of you're feeling herself. <laughs> okay? Feel yourself up all you want. You're still giving yourself a raw love. Yeah. Not agape love. Agape love. True, 
unconditional love is given one way, and you're going to see it in the model. When you give yourself what you need, the exact unmet need that you did not get in childhood, in pregnancy, when you give that to yourself, when you put yourself first, then and only then are you loving yourself unconditionally and can you then give to the other as you love yourself as Jesus said. And the steps are going to show this. And you're going to see when we get to the steps that the thing you give your client can be something super, super tiny. Doing this can be put in a very tiny way. We'll get there, okay? So now, every person, place, thing, or situation that causes any sort of problem in your life, the teeny tiniest paper cut to the drama of your life is who? Your parents, and I'm going to show you in a minute, okay? That represents your parents. Why? What was that? Okay, you're on it. That's part of it. It represents your parents. Why? Because you're what? Because you're not your needs, but you're lacking. Just like he said, your parents couldn't love you unconditionally. They didn't give you needs. Therefore, you must create situations that hurt you, that bother you, that annoy you, that piss you off. Why? Because you're trying to get your needs met. You're basically saying, Oye, papa, te voy a dar un chance. Te voy a dar otro chance. Te voy a dar. I'm giving you another chance. Every time you cause a problem in your life, you're saying, Mom, Dad, do it right this time, please, people. Here's the script. Just read from it. And the person, place, thing, and situation does what? They let you down. They fucking let you down. And why do they let you down? Fuck the script. Fuck the script. Why? Why can't they read from the script that you give them? Why can't that person that's pretending to be your mom or your dad not read from the right script that you have given them? Because they have to read the script that happened from conception. Because you need to continue with your Costco card. And you need to continue proving that you're a piece of shit. And if that person actually meets your needs, what the fuck will happen? You won't be with them no more. You won't be happy. You won't know who the fuck you are. Because now you're like, I actually worth something. Someone loves me. I can make the millions that I wanted. So, instead, we say, this is what I want you to tell me, but don't tell me. Read this one. Read this one. This is the real one you read. This is the one that's the one I need you to read so that my life stays. You see, I told you I was a piece of shit. You see, every single time I date some guy, he cheats. Every single time I go to school, the teacher hates me and gives me that. Every time I get married, the guy walks out on me. Jesus, I know somebody like that. <laughs> <laughs> and we all have one of those phrases. Every time I fill in the blank, blah, blah, blah happens. And where did we learn that? Where? Conception. Conception! Yay! We're learning! <laughs> okay? So your parents must not meet your needs so that you have a sob story, can
can be a piece of shit, can be a victim, and then one day, maybe, maybe not, one day, you might say, you know, this is kind of getting a little tiring. Yes, this story's boring, man. I know how it's going to end every single time. Maybe I'll get cancer. What else? And then I will start over. That's the seven gates that we're going to get to in a minute. Okay. So. We are now at pregnancy. We have gotten our emotional version of love. We now know how everyone's going to love us. Like shit, of course. And then we're going to actually pass through the birth canal. Let's assume finally, right? See how much has been done and we haven't even been born yet. These psychologists are missing out on the juice of the juice. I mean... No, and then you're born, you're cried, and you're bitch slapped. Yeah. It's like, Bleh. damn. So birth is not a fun experience. Okay, so now we're at the birth process. We haven't even taken our head out of the vagina. We're only at the birth process. What happens? During the birth process. Trauma for your ass. Trauma. Trauma up the fucking wazoo. That's right. Okay. I want to read something. <laughs> what? You're like, oh, push me shit. I'm not going to get into Exactly. Push me back. So let's read. You're like lying at the walls. <laughs> no. I'm going to read this to you. Don't want to know what's in the hell. Just do it. Especially when you fucked up. And you wonder why some babies say fuck this shit and they die. They say This is only a part of it. I still have all this shit to go. And that's the fucking crazy ass parents I picked. Fuck that. And then my mother's traumatized and she did something. And the baby's up in heaven. Yay! I saved myself. Damn right. Damn right. Because this is hell. We live in hell. We live in hell. Oh my God. Okay. Let's see if I can find the article. Uh, so I told you about this guy before. This is his particular language. I believe that this part is a big part of the the process. What Francis' theory, what I tell my clients is, the way you are born into the world will be the way that you transition <laughs> into new stages in your life. Okay? So, in your life, you go to elementary, middle school, high school. Those are stages. You move into new houses. You move into new relationships. You buy new clothes. We're constantly in a caterpillar, butterfly phase, right? The way you turn from caterpillar to butterfly, from fetus in the womb, popped out into birth baby, is a transition. My theory, one of the tenants I tell my clients is the way that the birth process was will explain how you move into your next stages. I told you I was born with no anesthesia. My mother's rushed to the hospital. My head is coming out. The doctors like hold it. My mother like hold it to madre. And I come popping out. And the nurse had to scoop me because I was almost falling to the floor. And pre pre, just a few months ago, that's how I did everything in my life. I was un cohete. 
I went like this. Boom, 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 boom. I mean, I was fast. I had three kids in a year. I got married. I got divorced. My husband walked out. I got new furniture. I got one degree. I was already starting another degree. There was no pause in anything in my life. I transitioned stage to stage as my birth. That is my belief. This is what I talk to clients about because it is an area where you can help clients change. When I understood that that was not healthy, I had to slow down. I just got divorced. I could not go through that process the way I'd always gone through life. And now I can't just get rid of cancer. Now I have 40 weeks or 30 weeks of hell, where the first time I got a lumpectomy, I was at back at work that afternoon. It's a place, these are all places where you can interject to help clients. That's why I'm breaking it down so you can see that there's so many places where you can help. And different theorists believe that you would interject at different places. I, when we get to this, you'll see that I start from conception. And if they don't know the conception, then I go to pregnancy. If they don't know the pregnancy, I ask about the birth. And if they don't know the birth, they at least know the zero to seven. And if not, you take out your little numerology thing that we did the other day and you add it up. Every time there is a one, which is a birth, it's going to reflect their birth. So there's so many ways to get to the thread. There's so many ways to get to the narrative. You're not stuck. You're not going to blank out with a client. I am going to see to that. Yes? So what happens uh, with kids are born early or early they spend more than nine months? Okay, all of that makes sense. My, the, it's all information you can get. The more information, the more you have in the story. My daughter was supposed to be born September 24th. She was born September 27th. When they cut me open, because she was a C-section, she was supposed to be a water birth. The guy told me, yeah, yeah, yeah. The day before, he's like, no, no, no. So I was angry. I felt lied to. That's something in there. So there's a distrust. She's always like. And when they take her out, I feel everything. They're like yanking her. She didn't want to come out. Who the hell wants to come out into this freaking world? And she had had a very traumatic pregnancy. Something very, very traumatic had happened. Not a bullet, but along those lines during my pregnancy with her. So that already tells that there is an issue. And when police are involved, in my case, there's going to be an issue with authority. With you, you might see police as helpful if they helped. Okay, you said no, okay. So that's something in the story. And I told my daughter, the other day we were driving, she's like, I want to go down this other road. And I said, no, you're going this road. She was taking me to the biopsy. She goes, there's a cop. I said, because it's your origin story. Slow down. Because in her psyche, I just told her that origin story just a few months ago. Prior to that, she didn't know. But it was in there. So people, there might be something with you, with the police, in your pregnancy, with you, with your son, because there's an authority issue with you. So oftentimes in the pregnancy or conception, things like that. If you're born premature, you might be like Aniella, that you feel you're late for things. That you're always running late. My daughter was born and her brothers were just a few months, they're 13 months apart. So they just graduated high school. She decided, to not do her senior year, do it in the summer, and now they all start college at the exact same time. They start August, she starts January. So in her psyche, she has to be just a step behind them, but it can't even be a whole year because she was conceived four months after them. So September, October, November, December. Not a coincidence. 
when they were being born, or four months old, she was conceived. So that four month thing is important. I wouldn't be shocked if one of them have a kid and four months later she got pregnant, for instance. <laughs> There's going to be a thing because in her psyche, they're triplets. She wants them to be triplets. So Stanislav Grof, this isn't the thing I'm looking for. There's a particular article. Wait, so you can have a kid after a C-section? Have... Yeah, but it oh, has to be yeah. a C-section if it's That's close. That's fine, I don't care. <laughs> Which is crazy. I had a C-section because she it's claims nice. that I'm too little to have a vaginal delivery. Yeah, and that could be true. Um, that kind of makes sense because both, like me and my brother were like, you know, we always consider each other twins because my twin died. And both my kids, he had kids, like he, his wives were pregnant at the same time as me, both times. They actually lost their, their babies and then they got pregnant again before I had mine. So their kids are only a couple months younger than my kids at the same time. Yeah. All of that is going to dictate whether you're a C-section, whether your cord is wrapped against around your thing. If your mother had a 72-hour labor versus a one-hour labor, all of that, all of that. My parents were on their way to go see the new. Um, What's this lady's name? Carol Burnett movie. My dad is paying, and my mom says, Me bias! Drama. And I'm like, a repressed actress. Me bias! I didn't get to go into the show. And they rushed to the hospital. So all those little details talk about the psyche. Okay. I don't know if this is the article, but we're just going to find one. There's this one particular one I was looking for, but he says that there's four stages. Um, the first is the BPM, called Basic Perinatal Matrix. The second is the COEX, the Systems of Condensed Experience. Then BPM 3 and BPM 4. Okay, so he says the child goes through this trauma. First is the primal union with the mother. This is the original condition of the intrauterine existence. So when the child and the mother are symbiotic, they're together. Exact the way that the mother feels, the baby feels. It's all protection, all security. I don't necessarily believe in that. Second, BPM2, antagonism with the mother. This is when the state, first stage of delivery this is when the worst experiences a human being can have. The fetus both mechanically and chemically alienates from the mother with no possibility of escape. So they feel trapped and overwhelmed. You're basically suffocated. You can't get out, you can't go out, you can't go out, you're in there. BPM-3, synergism with the mother, propulsion through the birth canal. This matrix is related to the second stage of delivery. The uterine contractions continue, but the cervix stands wide open and the gradual and difficult propulsion through the birth canal begins. There is an enormous struggle for survival, crushing, pressure, high suffocation. The system is not closed, but the baby doesn't know how it's going to get out. It's like, think of the trauma. Yeah, you, you shape. It's, yeah. it's freaking crazy. BPM4, separation from the mother, termination of the symbiotic union and formation of a new type of relationship. Remind me to tell you my theory about this and addiction. This matrix is related to the third clinical stage of delivery. In this phase, the agonizing experience of several hours comes to an end. Propulsion through the birth canal is completed and the ultimate intensification and tension and suffering is finally 
ends in relief. A lot, what does that mimic in our life? What does what I just said mimic? Everything. The height, height, height of tension, tension. <sighs> Orgasm. Orgasm. Death and sex are always found together. In the astrology chart, in the eighth house, is death and sex. With every death comes a life. Sex is the energy of life. I've told you the second chakra.